Knowing this, I had a song in my heart that always stayed with me as a child, and it was this. Change my heart, oh God, let it never be. Change my heart, oh God, let it be like you. See, I just knew I was going to give glory to God, and I was about to have a new heart. How he was going to do it, I had no idea. I just wanted to be obedient, see? Well, when I eventually left that hospital, I went home with a beautiful gift called the gift of piety. St. Paul tells us something in scriptures about praying unceasingly. See? Now you've heard it thousands of times probably. You just never think you had to apply to you. See? Nothing's impossible with God. Because when I went home from that, I couldn't stop saying the rosary and I just couldn't shut it off. I couldn't stop saying the stations of the cross. I had adoration, I started doing 10, 12 hours a day. I said the divine mercy. I said every kind of novena possible that God kept in me. Now, yeah. It happened. So I told Father that, and he looked at me and he said, do you know who you are? I said, yes, a child of God. A little smile on my face, under my breath saying, would you leave me alone, let me go home? You know, that's how it was, because I didn't want to be there, see? And he turned away and said, well, that's true, but do you know who you really are? Said, Father, I thought I answered you. And he said, you know who you are, Frank? I said, well, I guess I'm about to know, yes. What am I? He says, you're a true blue Roman Catholic. You're constipated, and we're now going to get it out of you. My mom's words came right back at me. I looked at this priest, said, this is incredible. And then he said this, you're going to place your hand on this woman's shoulder and we're going to pray. I said, no, very firmly, no. I looked up, his collar got large. I stuck my hand out and said, let's get this over with, please, God, fast. See? And we prayed. He said, amen. I said, amen. I said, great. I said, Joe, bend back the chair. Let me get out of here. This is crazy. I didn't know it. I didn't know what was going on. He turned around. He walked away from me. Then he came back. This was the biggest shock of my life. He said to me, I want to tell her what you saw. I looked at him. I said, now, how did this priest know I saw anything? I didn't know this guy. I said, there's no way he could have known. I said, and finally, I thought he was going to go through that whole routine. The guy said, a boat. Did you see a boat? I said, no. I saw these beautiful letters. B O A T. They were very radiant and purplish and blue and great highlights on the outside of them, because the same way I saw the letters of stop smoking. See, so I didn't. That's the only thing I could tell him. He says that's fantastic. I said really. He said yes. He said that's a healing of a boat. Now that the priest was crazy. How do you heal a boat? He no sooner said that. This woman jumped out of her desk, leaned over at me and said, Sir, I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life, and I don't know how you know about the boat. All I looked at is, says, ma'am, what's wrong with the boat? And she says, listen, my husband has been saving up money for three and a half years to buy this boat. For three and a half years, I'm praying that he'll never buy that boat. I looked at it, I said, lady, he's not going to buy the boat. God answer your question, just let me go home. You know, I still couldn't get out. Father decided to lean around. I heard my words that I always like to hear, especially in construction. He says, we're going for a coffee break. I says, great. Joe bent back the chair. Let's go get coffee, because you know where I would have been? In my car and out of there, see? But Joe says, no, no, no. He said, Frank, I'll get your coffee for you. I said, don't be so Christian. Just bend the chair back, you know? I couldn't get out because God wasn't allowing me to get out, see? Everybody left the classroom but myself and this woman. Never laid eyes on, didn't know who she was or anything. In walked her husband. Gets right beside her. Nails down. I thought this guy came in to propose to. I didn't know who this guy was. And I looking. I mean, we can't miss it. We get just at the little aisle. He's down on one knee. One knee. Said it loud enough. He says, "Darling, 
Yes. Do you know that boat I always want to buy? I'm never going to buy a boat. My God in heaven. This lady jumped up. The desk moved now, and her voice became a 10, screaming. Just as father walked back in, I said, I'll never get home. Hey, and I'm looking, Joe, bend the chair back. I want to go home. Just let me get out of here. He says, be quiet. Well, father came back to me, and then he says this. Frank, I ask you to do two things. First and foremost, I said, I want you to pray for good, solid spiritual doctor. I have one of the best. He's written a book called Christian Apologetics, along with Peter Kreef. His name is Father Ron Ticelli. You can go on YouTube and find him. You can find him at Boston College. And I couldn't ask for a better spiritual doctor. It was such a gift to get to him. And I'll give you a brief little teaching how we met on that. And Peter Kreef, a lot of people know. So they're solid people. You know, I like to tell people, Father goes to bed with his collar on, so in case you want to know, considering what you see at the school that he goes to. But it's okay. I pray for him every day because that's how solid he really is. He said, second thing, he said, I ask you to always be obedient to the magisterial church. We, know, we call God mother because we're in the womb of the church to be born into the kingdom of God. So I want to be obedient to mother. I've always been that. Whatever it took to do, that's what I've done. Always to be obedient. And if you're not obedient, then you won't see me sitting here or anywhere else. See, that's the most important thing. Okay? And it was amazing because neither one of us knew what we were doing. You had the most cold people in a sense of not knowing anything at all, but enough to have a mass and do your witnessing and then we'll pray. So we did that. I remember the lady, and prayed with her and she got a healing of her leg. She literally ran out of the church. <laughs> and from excitement, now you got to pitch your father my father was straight laced, looked at me and said, they're all going to act like this, there's something wrong here. And I said, you're asking me, I don't know, I'm asking you, you're the priest, eh? This is how we're looking at it. Well, we moved over two people because we used, they're all in the pews and we move along to pray with people. And all of a sudden, the woman ran back into the church. And he's looking at me, he said, she's coming back. I said, she's coming back, she's going to see you. I can't help her, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she ran all the way back in and she asked the woman, she said, excuse me, can I say something to Mr. Kelly? In my excitement, I forgot to tell him. She looked at me and said, Mr. Kelly, I just want to let you know, I am Sister Monisa's sister. I knew I was totally healed, see? And when you get something like that, you can't write a script like that. It was such a beautiful healing, even for myself, that I said, okay, God, from now on, like you said, you took over, guide the ship, it's all yours, do what you have to do. And for 26 years, Father and I have been together, and we've been doing this, and even in the book, you can hear the witnessings, and. I can't heal an ant. I know that's an ant in Ohio. I can't heal anything. God does the healing. 